what if you could take art and create a ceremony around it? Maybe you've got candles lit and you've got music going and you drop into a short prayer to begin your process. And after you create your art, you drop back into prayer and close it up. This is the exact process that Dana Welcher will be taking us through and explaining as she's talking about so many magical things in her life as far as creativity and art and how she became the artist that she is. Make sure to watch to the end. Stay tuned because it's magic. Welcome to my podcast, Today's Dream, Tomorrow's Reality. My name is Vicki Poole. I'm a master transformational coach, hypnotist, specializing in habit change. And this podcast is sponsored by The Enlightened Peach. And it's all about embracing our mosaic life. And some of you may ask, what is a mosaic life anyway? Well, it is recognizing that all the pieces of our life, the good, the bad, the indifferent, have all come together to make us who we are. Change any one thing and we are different. With that in mind, I invite you to embrace your perceived imperfections and celebrate who you are. This podcast is unedited and raw, just like life. And I am your host, and I have a special guest that I'm going to introduce you to in just a moment. And I, before I do, I would love for you to do me a solid and that is to leave a comment, ask a question, and to remember, like, subscribe, and share. So now let's get started. So I am super excited to have Dana. Dana, is it Wilcher? Is that how you say it? Yes. Wilcher yep. um, on, on the podcast. And it's so funny how we connect with people in different areas of our life. And then when we come together, it's like, how do I even know you? And that's the experience that we just had right before we got on here. And actually, I know her because I decided it was during the COVID stuff or right as COVID happened. I don't even recall, to be honest with you. Um, however, I guess it was after COVID and I was... Um, I I can't, I'm, blah, 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 blah. I, uh, I, ha I followed a gentleman on YouTube, Victor Odo, and one of the days I was listening to his um, his YouTube, and he mentioned that his wife Patty was having this retreat in Sedona, and I had never been to this type of retreat, and I thought, ooh, that sounds really cool. How can I make that happen, right? And so I got on a call with Patty and I scheduled the retreat and I'll be perfectly honest. And this is a long explanation of how I know you, but I'll be perfectly honest. When I signed up, my first thoughts were, oh my gosh, I'm probably going to be the oldest person there. Will I fit in? Will well, I feel comfortable. Well, I feel like the old woman that stuck out, you know, the old woman in the shoe kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I went to this retreat and I was blown wide open with so many things. I was just, oh, uh, uh, it's one of the things that I talk about a lot um, is this, this retreat. And this is actually where I met Dana. And she was one of the, I guess you would call instructors, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And she was teaching art, but it was like one of the things that I was blown away with was I have been um, an artist uh, and I do my air quotes just in case. So those that can't see me, I air quoted that because I never really felt like an artist. I love to draw and a paint, but I always felt like the work I did was really good until I saw what somebody else did. You know, it was that comparison thing. And I always wanted it to look exactly like what I wanted it to. I wanted it to, to be where you could look at it and say, yes, that's a leopard. Yes, that's a tree and a house. And you could look at it and see all those things. But the thing that you opened to me, Dana, was that we could just get our brush and our paint and we could just put paint on this canvas. And there were these people walking around with drums and the feathers and the whole thing. And it was like, 
Oh my gosh, I loved that piece of art I did. And it don't look like anything, but I love it that I paid a big amount when I got home to have it actually framed and everything and put on my wall because it was like this opening to an expression that I'd never felt able to open before. So that's a very long explanation about <laughs> how I know you. However, I just had to share that because I know I mentioned it to you that day, but that's been a few years ago. So I just wanted to tell you how impactful you were in helping me to see that it was okay to just paint feeling and be an expression without it having to be an actual object that people could look at and say, yes, that's a tree. Um, it was just so profound to me. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for sharing that. I love to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, if you don't mind, you could tell people a little bit about yourself because I know you do so much more than just this. And uh, so I would love to get to know you a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. So I am a visionary artist. Um, I do large scale spiritually themed oil paintings, um, a lot of original work that's just inspired by my healing journey, um, plant medicine experiences, um, just symbolic, you know, comings together, I guess you could say, and representing that on canvas. Um, I also do commission work. Um, I'm a mentor as well for artists looking to build their businesses, especially spiritual artists like myself. Um, I am not, I haven't done it too much, um, in the recent like year or two, um, but I was, uh, doing a lot of the, of the art workshops that you went through as well. Mm -hmm. Um, just creative expression workshops. So helping people to tune into their innate creativity, seeing that everyone is an artist because you're, you're creating your, your reality every day and creativity is an inherent part of our nature. Um, so when we tune into our, are, are um, allowing ourselves, giving ourselves permission to express. There's so much that can be expressed through that, even people who wouldn't consider themselves artists. So um, yeah, so that's a little overview, um, artist, art mentor, creative guide. Yeah. And I've yeah. seen some of your artwork. Oh my gosh, is it magnificent? I mean, um, I am very, let's see, what is the word? It is not envious. It is... Um, grateful that it's there, I guess, because I love looking at it and I would love to be that type of artist, you know? Um, but I'll be honest, like I said, one of the things that plagues me is that comparison thing, you know? Right. Um, and sometimes it's comparing me to something that I did before, not necessarily somebody else. Right. And, you know, everything has to be is, look just like it's supposed to look. And, it's, it was so freeing doing that workshop with you. However, I find myself now dropping back into some of those old thoughts and habits about it. And right. recently I, um, I met a, a woman through a, my podcast that is a, um, she teaches improv and we just mm -hmm. connected really good. And so we created a workshop together where I did the hypnosis and the transformational coaching and she did the improv and we just used her creativity with improv to help people open up a little bit. Mm. Um, and so it's just a little bit different than doing the painting. But now I'm thinking that I got so much out of the painting part. Maybe we should do a thing where we're painting and, and, mm -hmm. um, and letting things out then, because it's like, um, I even, I even had a few people that said, how did you make that do this and do that and everything? I said, I don't know. I was just painting. And if water dripped down, I let the water drip down. It was just not worrying about how things looked, just right. doing it, you know? And so it was such a beautiful process that I had never been through before. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. And so one of the things that I want to ask you is I know you said you do plant medicine. So I know while we were on that retreat, we did some of the, the, it wasn't the ayahuasca. It was the uh, hape, the, the hape. Yes. Hape. The tobacco yes. Snuff. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. We did that. And, you know, and I've continued with that somewhat, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, and I, like I had mentioned to you before, I haven't done ayahuasca, but my brother has several times and he goes to Costa Rica, he goes to Peru, he's been to a lot of different places. And so do you feel like, 
and that when you do ayahuasca, that it actually helps you to get in touch with that artistic place and within you. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's a great question. Um, and that's actually a question I get a lot from people who know, like I sit with ayahuasca and then I do art. They're like, Oh, does it, does it help your artwork? And I would say absolutely. Um, and it really like the deepest way that I found that, um, plant medicine, ayahuasca, the other plant medicines have really helped my artwork is, you know, I think about like, what is artwork? Art is a external representation of what's going on inside mm -hmm. right so ayahuasca has really just helped me to go through and look at and get to know just the deepest lightest and also darkest parts of myself you know where a lot of like this our creative energy can sometimes be like stuck behind like our own our healing stuff that we need to do right so just in the process of kind of having this expedited um, opportunity, we'll say, to go into really deep healing has just kind of opened up the pathways, opened up the channels to allow me to connect more to my creativity. And so that's just one aspect of it, of, you know, the, they say like one ayahuasca ceremony is like 10 years of therapy. And I totally <laughs> agree with that myself. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like doing that that work to to just clear the channels and and release some of those blockages to tune into who I really am, my art has had a big impact. Um, and the other really beautiful thing I find with ayahuasca specifically, because I've sat with other kinds of medicines as well, is you know ayahuasca it's thought of as a she. So you know so we say like she, you know, her spirit, the spirit of this medicine is feminine. It's very creative, intuitive. It's like very serpentine. And so I find that that, um, that feminine creative energy is really activated in the medicine. So if I have okay. like a vision or idea that I'm playing with, then the medicine can help me kind of go in and see, put new things together. I maybe wouldn't have thought of have visions that inspire the artwork because you can have a lot of visions with the medicine. I, I do. Some people don't. I do myself. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been, I mean, a, a, a large majority actually of the new paintings in my, my new series that I'm working on called, called Sacred Initiations. I think pretty much so far, every one of those paintings, like I was working on the ideas maybe for months, but then it's usually in a ceremony when I'm, when I see like the, the full finished vision of the painting that I then create. So it's absolutely had an effect on my art for sure. Wonderful. Well, you know, one of the things that happens to me with art, I will say is that I can have a vision of what I want something to look like, but I never can get that to look on canvas like it looks in my head. And that disappoints me. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so do you have anything like that happen? Does it measure up when you put it on the canvas to what you envisioned? Well, it's an interesting process because so for me, like how I see um a vision of a painting, it Honestly, like after I create the painting in like in real life, I can't even really remember if it was accurate to the vision I saw. Okay. And so I feel like there's a really important piece of this with any creative process of like tuning into the vision. Like, and I hear that a lot with artists is like, well, I see it in my head, but then it doesn't look like how I yeah. saw it. But the thing is, it may not be meant to look how you saw it in your vision, in your head, what actually wants to come through and needs to come through might be kind of different. And so I just kind of embrace that. And so, <clears throat> you know, I may have an idea, a vision of, of this finished painting in my head, but then as I go through this, the steps of capturing a reference photo and designing it, putting it on the canvas, painting it, usually some time has gone by. And at this point, I'm really like mindful and allowing of um, just knowing that whatever comes out actually on the canvas is likely going to be pretty different than what I saw. And yeah. it's giving myself permission to let it be what it wants to be. Cause a, a big philosophy in my artwork and my, um, in my practice is that, um, and this, this concept is talked about by, um, Elizabeth Gilbert in big magic, which is an awesome book for creatives. Mm -hmm. And she talks about how creative energy it's, it's floating around us. It's floating in the Hills. It's, it's in the cosmos. It's all around us. And 
a creative idea will come and will like present itself to you basically and say, will you channel me? Like, will you put me into physical form? And so I don't see it as any of the paintings I create are not me doing it per se. It's creating a clear channel. And I have a lot of practices of opening creative channels and kind of stepping out of the way to allow what wants to come through to come through. Because when I start saying, well, it didn't look how I thought it would in this, then my, I'm getting in the way. Like my mind yeah. is getting in the way I can of this see that. pure yeah. essence that wants to come through. So it's, you know, we, we hear people say being a conduit, channeling, channeling with art. And that's a big, a big um, thing in my practice. And really what I feel that means is kind of stepping out of the way a little bit as much as we can to allow these things to come through. So um, yeah. Yeah. So it's really like that permission to allow it to be different. Right. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So I want to ask you, so when you were really young, were you drawing and painting then? Yeah. So one of my favorite stories, um, I actually have this written in my bio on my website is when I was probably like five years old. Um, I guess as soon as I was old enough to hold like a, a marker and get some paper, um, my grandma was kind of like my art mentor through my childhood and my early years. Nice. She really like that passion for me. And she said that I would always get these square pieces of paper mm-hmm. and all these different kinds of markers. And I would draw these like what looked like energy vortexes, like and how I would choose the colors would make it look like they were like receding into space. Uh-huh. And she said I would draw like hundreds of these. And I'm just drawing these like vortexes. And I nice. I think back, I don't, I kind of remember doing them, but I was pretty young. But I I, I think that what I was doing is, um, and this, you know, I, I assume your audience is pretty like, you know, there's, they're open-minded thinkers. Um, right. But I, I think that what I was doing is, is like, I was so fresh in going through like the incarnation portal that a lot of artists have depicted through their art people talk about there's like this kind of portal that your soul goes through as it's coming into the body into utero and I think I was trying to draw that like I was remembering that so that's where I started as a kid um then I just got really interested in like my grandma would teach me anatomy we would like pause so did she um was she she was an artist too Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. She's an artist. Um, yeah, she, she grew up, um, just in a, in a different time, um, where it wasn't as, you know, she became a wife and a mom and had a, like four kids. And so that was her focus. Mm-hmm. Um, she went to school for art. And so she, she was really primed to be like the most like badass, like grandma artist mentor <laughs> ever. And I, you know, so lucky I'm you. <laughs> right. It, it helped me so much. So yeah. she taught a lot um and I just explored different mediums and just really like it was like my I grew up with a lot of trauma in my life as a kid so it was really like my cathartic process to just better myself focus on something when Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like things were making sense around me so a lot of my work was self-taught but I've pretty much always been a visual artist I'd say yeah so are you open to talking about what your trauma was yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's something, do you have like specific questions or just kind of, no, I'm just curious. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that I, um, I've talked about a lot in my content, in my podcast, things like that. Okay. Um, so I grew up, the cool thing about how I grew up is, um, I grew up in a log cabin that my um, grandparents built up in the Eastern Sierra mountains near Mammoth Lakes. Um, didn't have electricity at my house until I was 10. So grow wow. up here, girl off the grid, just with nature. Um, it was a beautiful way to grow up, but it was very isolated. It was a very isolated way to grow up. Um, both my parents were alcoholics. Um, I didn't have this information until I was older because I suppressed it, but my dad was physically, emotionally, sexually abusive to me pretty much my whole childhood. He mm. died when I was 10. Um, and then after that, it was like, my mom became a single mom with this ranch and these two kids and just had to really, you know, just work to support us. So there wasn't a lot of emotional support there. I had a lot of suppressed abuse trauma from my dad. Um, and so I really just kind of suppressed it from the age of eight, uh, 10 until 18. And then 
everything, it was my spiritual awakening. Like everything came back up um, because we lost our house and 40 homes in our neighborhood, our pets. My mom was gone, like all of our belongings, everything to a massive wildfire that came and just destroyed everything. So, you know, so at that point, I had a few things that I brought to college with me, um, a, f- a few paintings, but like all of my art, everything that we owned was just gone overnight. Wow. Um, so, and I see that really as like, it was a spiritual awakening for me because it was like all of this energy of the trauma that I went through as a kid, it was like, it partly, it was stored and locked on the land in that house. And so then when the fire just swept it all clean, it was kind of like the feeling of it was like it it like released spiraled up into the cosmos and then came right back to me and then i i mean i lost it honestly vicky like i went into psychosis i had all of these memories i didn't understand surfacing um my mom and i split ways at that time so i felt very much on my own and i was also waking up to my spirituality, like kundalini energy. So it was a huge awakening, very much triggered by trauma. Um, but it also played a really huge role in my artwork. So was well. your grandmother still around at this point? Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Yes, she was. Um, yeah, she was. So she was, I went and stayed with her for a little bit back in my hometown, um, lived with one of my aunts for a little while. And just that was when I really was like, I was very suicidal at that time as well. And I just thought, okay, this is, this is a decision point here. Either I'm going to leave the planet or I'm going to choose to heal. There's no other way right now. And it had to be a very conscious choice. And so I chose to heal. So I was in therapy every single week for almost four years. Um, Then I started uh, around the time I met you, I started my plant medicine journey, um and just kind of it felt like kind of digging myself out of the trenches a mm-hmm. bit for a while and just getting my sanity back and um and it's really interesting if you go on my website um in my gallery section i created basically a chronological um or viewing of, of my artwork and you can see like you can see the artwork before the fire happened. You can see the artwork while the fire, like while everything was cracking open and then where it evolved to. And it's, I see how much, like I see my journey reflected in the art and it's kind of crazy. Yeah. So it's like a visual journal. Yeah. Yeah. It very much is. Yeah. Yeah. So do you remember what it was? Cause you said you either were leaving the planet or you were going to have to make a change. So yeah. what was the the thing that happened that s- made you decide that this, I, w- I, I want to live, I want to make this work? Well, you know, two things come to mind, which are two like really moving points in my life where one of, so one of the, the instances that made, that had me decide to live, I actually created a painting as like a visual representation of this moment but, um, and I can like send it to you or something after if you or your viewers want to see it. I don't really okay. have it um, displayed too much, but um, basically I had this moment where I was in my grandma's house and I was on all of these medications at the time, like sleeping, antidepressants, anxiety. And I, that was the closest I'd ever got to taking my life. And I, you know, I had all of the pills in my hand and I was about to take them. And then I felt this, like, just this, I'm getting chills talking about it, but it's like this, just this warm, strong rush of energy come in. And I closed my eyes and I saw this vision of, I didn't even know what my higher self was at that time, but it was like this alternate version of me. It was just like light and love. And she came in and she had the cap in her hand to the pill bottle and she put it on and it was like this vision I just got struck with. And she just put the cap on the pill bottle and then she pointed out this window in the vision and it was like light and beauty and color. And it was like this wordless, um, this wordless reminder instruction of like, if you choose to stay, there is so much beauty waiting for you. Uh-huh. And so it was, it was just this moment where I, I it was like my higher self came in and was like, it's not your time yet. Like you need to stay. 
And the other thing that really impacted me was um, my art teacher in school. He was a super cool guy. He was like, he would let us do whatever the fuck we wanted. He was like, he was a homie, you know, and we <laughs> stayed friends afterwards. And he was really there for me in, in that time when I went back to school, but a different relationship. I was now, it was like adult friends more so than like me as a past student. And I reached out to him around that time. And I just told him like, I don't know who else to tell, but I, I don't want to be here anymore. And something he told me was as an artist, before, he said, before you go, he's like, I'm not telling you to stay here. I know you've been through a lot and you probably don't want to be here. He's like, but before you go to do your art, you're channeling this channel, the, your artwork justice that you've loved your entire life. He said, you need to create your life's masterpiece, your life's work. And he's like, so, you know, get to work on creating that. And once you create that masterpiece, then if you want to go, you can. And he's like, he was a funny guy, but he was like, I'll drive you out to the desert myself. <laughs> he's like, but after, <laughs> which helps me. I needed to, I didn't need like, no, you don't, yeah. can't do it, Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, I'll take you there myself. Like, I'll help you do it. But like, not actually, but you know what I mean? I know what you mean. <laughs> but don't well, be, yeah. do people don't be writing him. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't be writing me being like, who? this fucking guy but, but, but yeah so that really stuck with me of like I, and it was kind of this humorous reluctant thing where I was like shit you know he's got a point like it is this trade that I've loved my entire life I need to create one more masterpiece right and honestly Vicky to this day I'm not that I want to leave the planet anymore but I still haven't created that masterpiece mm. I don't know if I really will you know like his right one is different and better than the last yeah so thinking about that though that really helped me to stay in that moment when I was like all right I'll create one more really like the epitome of all of my work in one painting so I was like got, getting to work trying to design it because I was like all right I'm gonna do this painting then I'm gonna leave right but I still don't feel that I've done that painting and that is one of the things that I think kept me here Ah, oh, that's a beautiful story. I love that. I Isn't love that. Cool? You know, everybody should have a a person that they can go to that helps them in that way. You know, because yeah. there's a lot of people deal with that same thing where it's like, I don't think I'm supposed to be here anymore and I just want to go. And, you know, and I, the thing that grabs me with that is, you know, there's um, who is it? I can't even remember who who says it, but it's like the um, the graveyard is full of untapped potential. There yeah. are people there are um, people could have, you know, cured cancer, created a masterpiece, um, invented something big but mm -hmm. they never did. They never did their potential, whether they cut their life short or they just never did their their gift. Right. Um, so it's beautiful that you were able to not leave too early and start working on it. So it just means that you've got a lot more potential and things to share with the world. Cause I would hate to have not been in that class with you. It was life-changing yeah. for me, you know? Um, and I'm sure from what everybody was saying in that class, that that's, that's the truth, you know, for most people, and mm -hmm. so I, I love that you're still here and that you're sharing your story and giving everybody this, this vision of, well, what can I create if I stay? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I really love, you know, sharing that of like, what is the, what is like the, the unmet potential that you have that like you came here to share and it's like a quote I heard of like, don't die with your gifts inside you, yeah. you know, like get yeah. them out. And so I feel like I'm not, I'm, I didn't even consciously put this together until this moment, Vicky, but I feel like that's kind of influenced why I feel passionate about helping other people tune into their creativity and their gifts, because whether it's a life you cut short on your own or a life that just naturally expires, it's like, no one should leave the planet having not expressed the gifts that they came here to share. Like there's no yeah. worse feeling. And I feel like that's, that's what kept me here is like, like I, I can't leave without expressing what I came here to express, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. And you know, one of my 
fears has always been leaving this earth without having made a big enough difference. Mm -hmm. Um, And it may sound egotistical, but I want to be remembered. I want to be remembered for something, whether it's just there's a few people that uh, made a huge difference in their life, or there was a lot of people, or I invented something. I don't even know, but it's like there to have been here and not have made a difference in the world seems like such a waste. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it's, we're all needed here right now. You know, like I, I've, I've heard like just this, um, store, I don't know how you, how you would say it, but just this thing about like the light workers and the people who are coming in, who are like, it's like have this burning passion, desire, creativity to make a change, make an impact. And the most painful thing is when that, when we suppress that, or when that is suppressed, Mm -hmm. And it's, that's for reason, you know, because like, we're being called here, not just, I I feel anyway, like not just for our own personal evolution that is always present and a part of things. But I really believe that like people are being called to this earth right now to share, to help, to inspire thought, to create movements, to push change so that we can save this planet and our race, you know? Yeah, We have this like deep, a lot of us who came here have this deep instinctual need and desire to share our gifts. And that's, that's for a reason, like even bigger than us, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. And you're, you're doing it. We're doing yeah. it. Yeah. I actually, I have a, um, a, a little button that, um, I got when I was, um, in one of the getting one of my certifications, I don't even remember which one, but it, that one of the things it says is bigger than us. Mm -hmm. And, um, because it really is. And I feel like every time that we can make a difference with just one person, we've already started that ripple effect, you know, because that one person is going to do something for somebody. And then it's just going to be this big thing, um, like the little ripple in the ocean. And I know this is kind of probably politically incorrect, but I remember years ago, (laughs) it was a, um, a, a thing. It was a commercial on TV about STDs. (laughs) <laughs> and it said, you know, when you have sex with one person, you're having sex with all these people. And it shows, right. you know, these people that they've had sex with and they've had sex with. And they. And I feel like it's the right. same thing with change. You know, right. we're, we're changing people and then we're changing the people that they get to know and then they get to know and they get to know. Totally. So, so I, have this, I have this vision of all these people's faces popping up on the screen. Yes. <laughs> That's how it happens, you know, whether yeah. it's. STDs or light work. It's kind of <laughs> yeah. the same process in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. I always feel like that's, I don't know if that's the one I'm supposed to share or not, but that's the one that was coming up. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> so you. as you were um, talking about your doing your art and everything when you were young, it made me think of when, when I was really young, I did a lot of drawing and stuff, but I did, you know, we got coloring books and we got crayons, but what I would end up doing is I would, sometimes I would create my own pictures and color them, or I would do the pictures, but I would shadow everything and I would do all this. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was doing it to the point where my mom, finally, she took me to get private art lessons because I was so into it that she said, you just, you got a gift here. Let's, let's get you some classes and everything. And so that's how I, and I didn't take the classes till like I was in the sixth grade maybe, but um, it was like, it helped me to see things differently. And I just had a conversation with someone this morning and um, it's actually my, my niece. And she said that, she had been wanting, she has muscular dystrophy. And Mm -hmm. so she doesn't have a lot of mobility and stuff, but she can paint. And so she had started when she first started, she said, well, I'm not an artist. And I said, just play with it. You know, it doesn't matter. And so she started doing tutorials and she was painting rocks and painting tiles and she's been doing amazing things with it. And yesterday she created one that she didn't have a tutorial for. She just did it on her own. And it was just beautiful. And then she said to me, 
which makes me think of all this art stuff that we're talking about. She said that before she started doing all of this stuff with the art, when she would be outside, she didn't notice so much. She said now she notices how the light comes through the trees and the different colors of the leaves and all the different things that just are creative things that are out there for us to see all the time and we don't notice. Mm -hmm. And um, so she's actually going to come into my group and talk about how it has opened her artistic visualization for just life itself. It's just, oh, cool. it's amazing. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing that you're talking about that you're helping people with in a way, right? Um, because now she actually sees beauty in the most strange is not like the right the word. Yeah, like yeah, it's mundane kind of yeah, and, and so and you know, and that's the way I've been for most of my life. It's like I would see something, and I would be in awe of how this tree has these golden leaves, and this one, the same kind of tree, or on this side of the tree, the leaves look this different color, and you know, it was like everything from a cloud to a sunset, everything is looks like a visual painting to me. It's an art, you know, and I'll see a cloud and I'll think, oh, that's beautiful. I know if I take a picture, it's not going to look right, but then I don't end up painting it. So I'm, I really, I think for me, it's getting into this place where I feel like, okay, I grab my paints and I'll just paint it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um. So do you have, like for somebody else that's like me that loves doing all this stuff, but just doesn't seem to do it. Do you mm -hmm. have some advice? How can someone, let, let's just, okay, I'll just call a spade a spade. Tell me <laughs> <laughs> how I can maybe embrace that part of me so much easier and better is not the right word, so much easier and fluidly in mm -hmm. my life. Yeah. So a couple things come to mind, which is, I mean, the first thing is like kind of setting yourself up to have a good experience with your expression, right? So having some basic materials in front of you, even if you don't really know how to use them per se, just like our art workshop, like a lot of people didn't know how to, like, didn't know how to actually use these materials, but it's like, we remember things as a kid, you know, it's like, yeah, we know a paintbrush, we know a paint, we know something to put it on, right? So it's like having the materials and the next thing that I really find that is a really core aspect of my practice and that um, I teach people is have setting your own creative container. So, and I'll explain what that means. So you okay, have your materials in front of you. I was yeah. about to ask. <laughs> yeah. So setting your own creative container, this is a practice that I use every single time that I paint, that I teach people. And it's, it's really like, you know, we, like you, for example, you know, having like this creative, this desire, but then maybe like there's things where you're like, you don't really find yourself like jumping to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. like, with mm -hmm. like that a, a big part of self-expression I find is understanding that there is going to be some blocks and there is going to be resistance and there could always be other things you could be doing. Right. Like right. we all have busy lives, families, kids, jobs. So it's like, waiting just to feel like this spark of excitement that takes you over to the point where you just have to go and grab your materials like that may not be realistic like for for a lot of people myself included like sometimes I feel like I have to kind of drag myself in front of my artwork but then and that's just the natural resistance of it because then when we set and this goes into the creative container then is understanding that don't wait to explore your creativity, like set time aside for it. That's been such a big thing for me. So I'll have all of my materials ready. And then, and this is a hack that I've used to kind of trick my mind into like allowing me to be creative mm -hmm. is that understanding that our minds actually fear creative expression because one, it's it's kind of, um, it may be rubbing up against areas where we don't feel good enough, where we've been shut down in the past. Um, but also creative expression is this exponentially expansive energy. And so the ego in your mind, it gets a little bit afraid of like, oh, if you go 
into this space, you're you're going to lose all the structure and you're just going to keep expanding into who knows what with your creativity. Mm. And so something that I found is really helpful is setting the creative container. And so having the materials um, and then kind of t- telling your mind like, okay, brain, you know, we are going to spend the next 90 minutes, two hours, an hour, whatever, in our creative channel here. Okay. So after we'll even set a timer for it after 60 minutes, after 90 minutes, then we're going to come out of it. And so that immediately starts to rest the ego and the the resistance and the fears at ease a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then we can go in, you know, I, when I drop into creative containers, like I'll have some candles some some incense burning things that are like inspiring to my senses then music music plays such a huge part of my artwork so turning on music and then the biggest thing for me is doing opening and closing prayers for my creativity so Uh this could be different for everyone Um, I can share with you like the prayers that I say every time I go into my practice Um, but just essentially it's just praying to your spirit, to your soul, to the creative energies that are present, that you are opening a channel of creativity to allow whatever wants to come through to come through. And just, you know, thanking this, the all, all parts of you and your guides and everything that's present in the channeling session and just praying to open the session. Right. And so then you've been for like a 90 minute session or however long, And then at the end, we close the channel. So that's where you say, you know, thank you to my soul and my spirit. Thank you to all those present in this channeling session, blessing and protecting this channel, this channeling session for today in this way is now closed. And so I find that having a practice like that, where you understand that um, you may not just feel inspired all the time to go and do it. But when you actually set some, just a little bit of time, maybe not even every day, but a few times a week or something aside for it, and you make it a whole like ceremonial kind of experience for yourself and you give yourself permission, like in this 90 minutes, whatever wants to come out, let's let it come out. And that's when it can get really cathartic. Cause like we've talked about and you've mentioned with this kind of painting, it's not about what it looks like. It's about what it feels like. So intuitive going to the colors you know, if you find yourself getting too like detail obsessed with something, grabbing a big paintbrush and slashing over it. And it it helps to rewrite the mind with things like perfectionism. Um, yes. Did that answer your question? Yes. Yes. I love that. So you're basically creating the ceremony around it so that yeah. it feels like this it's more of a spiritual space instead of I'm just going to do my drawing and painting and stuff. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I love that. that. And that practice for me was really, it started to really form with me in that way. Like after I started doing a lot more ceremonies, plant medicine ceremonies, and I just saw like, what, you know, what do we do in a ceremony? We have opening prayers, we heal and express ourselves and let all this magic happen. And then we close it. And so for me, I just, I thought, well, what, what if I take that practice into my artwork, into my ceremony of creativity and you, and the cool thing is you can do this with so many different things, like the power of prayer and creative channels with, you know, if you're wanting to write some content, like I do it when I want to write content, like I'll pray to open a creative channel to write content. And then I close it after. And I've just found that like, it's, like the amount of work that I can get done on a painting when I started doing opening and closing creative channels in this way, like the same amount of work that would take me weeks might take me two days. Nice. Nice. It's just like, it's crazy. You know, I'm actually, I'm writing a book too, and I'm, I'm using this term a little bit loosely because (laughs) I, I have index cards and I've written part of a chapter in my, in my word document. Right. Um, but it's like, uh, this is just really intriguing me because, uh, not only do I want to write this book, but it just, you know, can't seem to get myself to do it and then to do the artwork too. So I can see how that would help me in both arenas, not only the artwork, but in creating a space where I just spend some time with this 
and I just let it flow, whatever it is, and just mm -hmm. not worry about it and just see what shows up. And, you know, I think, cause one of the things that if pe people that are like me, um, it's like, I, I get caught up in the, um, the masculine side of things, I believe, because I want it to be a certain, a certain thing. I have this agenda with it. Right. And mm -hmm. so dropping into, to this ceremony thing would allow me to just let it flow and right. be okay with whatever the hell shows up. Right. Right. And you brought up a really, really good point. I wanted to touch on real quick is that our, how we utilize our masculine and our feminine energy when it comes to creativity. And I find that like, you know, when we have too much masculine energy with our creativity of like, you know, it, it has to be perfect and we have to just sit down and force ourselves to do it and, and just like get it done. That's like purely in the masculine. And that's, it's hard to just allow the, the channel and the, the, um, the creativity to come through, but I see it as there's a balance of both that is needed because like you think about, I think about like our masculine energy is like, and regardless of gender, gender orientation, anything like that, our masculine energy, I see it is like the riverbed, right? Okay. And then the feminine is the water that flows through the riverbed. So if we mm -hmm. don't have the structure of the riverbed, then the water is going to get thin and spread out and go everywhere and have no direction. And so I see it as when we're setting a creative channel, mm -hmm. that is our masculine structure coming in of like we're going to set this safe space this container to then step back and allow the feminine and the creative energy to flow through it so it's it's not just forcing yourself to be creative in the masculine and it's not just like we'll just do it whenever we want and <laughs> flow and whatever that does work for some people but it may not be consistent yeah it may be yeah. challenging in ways so I find that having that balance is really helpful yeah. Thank you for that. I love that. Cause uh, it's definitely, this is, this has got my, um, my inner light and my inner thoughts just going crazy about how I can expand the things I'm doing and actually create this space because, you know, I stay very busy. Like most of us, if you're an entrepreneur, you're busy. Like right now, if I looked behind this screen, I've probably got 30 tabs open on my on my, yeah, right. <laughs> on my yeah. computer and which tends to be the case. And then, you know, I have my, my podcast and my coaching and all these different things. And one of the things that I find that prior to talking to you today has been happening is that the creative space ends up being an excuse of, well, I've got this to do, so I can't do that. Right. And, you know, and so I think, by talking to you, it's given me this, this thing in my head that says, it's okay to, you don't have to do it every single day, but let's look at what are two days that we could devote to one of the other, either the book or the art or something so that I can let that creativity flow. And so, um, it's definitely got my, um, my, my mind kind of, um, working on a little bit of how I can make that work out for me. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so good for your listeners to hear as well. Like just using you as an example of like someone who has a lot going on and is very busy and has, you know, a lot of projects and things. Um, just seeing that like you may, you know, if we if we just are passive with it, like our creativity can and our self-expression can kind of slip into the background, right? But using yeah. that masculine container to set aside time to explore and then just let whatever comes through comes th come through whether that's with your book or um art or just anything like for your audience like you can do the same thing with um with writing with cooking with photography with dance and movement like just giving giving yourself that permission the safe space where um another really important thing i find is like turn your phone on airplane mode like yeah. whenever I'm in a creative channel of any kind, my phone is not on because I find that when we move into this creative channeling space, we're really sensitive to frequencies and let alone the distraction of you're trying to tune in and then you've got people texting you Yeah, <laughs> of like, let's just exit that from the equation and like be present with, with our expression. 
Ah, uh, yeah, that's beautiful. And you know, one of the things that um, I like to do, and I'll just share uh, right now, I am fostering a puppy. Um, oh. And so it is really um, a lot more work than I remember a dog being because mine's <laughs> been gone for a couple of years. But it's like, for until I got this puppy, I was doing this every single day. I was going and sitting out on my patio in uh, Lotus position and I was doing my 30 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever I had of total silence of just getting in, listening to sounds and just being right. Well, since I got this puppy, I've been not doing that because, you know, I got to take care of this puppy and I'm having to adjust my hours and everything. And so this is a reminder too, that mm -hmm. that one thing that I was doing that I've really had me feeling amazing I've, I've been feeling a little frustration in the past week. And I think that it's because I haven't been doing this meditation, this outlet of just being, you know? Um, so this is a, a great um, reinforcement of um, do the things that make you happy. Doggone mm -hmm. it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you do besides art that makes you happy? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I love listening to audiobooks. Mm -hmm, like me too. I'm just, you know, out cooking, doing, running around, doing whatever. Like I liked, I'm very much like um, multitasking. Mm -hmm. So multitasking, I love listening to like fantasy, romance, audiobooks, Um I've got a friend that's a romance author. I'll tell you about her book. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. You'll have to that. check her out. Um, yeah. Just so, for, so everybody that's listening, might as well just go ahead and plug yeah. in here. It's yeah. April D is in David Berry, B E R R Y. April and she, D Berry. Yes. And she's on Amazon, okay. on Kindle Unlimited, on Kindle. And uh -huh. she has an audio as well. And I don't know if you find that on Kindle or where you find it, but she does have several of them in audio books, but she's got quite a few books out. She's a friend of mine. And, uh -huh. um, and I don't like romance books for whatever reason. And I think it's because when I was a teenager, I had a friend that loved Barb is it Barbara Cartland, uh, Maybe, I don't know, but it was an, an author and it was like, I read the first one. Oh, it was pretty good. I read the second one. It sounded like the same story with just different people's yeah. names. And it was like, mm -hmm. nah, I don't like this. So I didn't read them anymore. But then when my friend wrote them, it was like, okay, I'll support her, you know, right. and I read it and I thought, oh, I really like this. So then I, I've got, I've got most of her books, but yeah. Awesome. So, ch so check her out. So anybody that's listening, check out April D. Berry and um and see what you what you think cool well i'm <laughs> yeah. always on the lookout for good new authors so I'll yeah yeah out. yeah so yeah, what's the audio book that you're listening to now right now what is the one i have to i was just traveling for a couple of weeks so i haven't been like with my my audiobook regime mm -hmm. um i have to go find my phone and look at at which one um but that might, that might take a little time. That's but. okay. So, yeah. So <laughs> what yeah, do you but, typically listen to? Is it the romance or is there something else that you listen to? For, yeah, for me, well, I listen to mostly self-help, personal development kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And every now and then I'll listen to something that may be a mystery or something like that, but mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I mean, I, it's like, I have two main genres that I like listening to, which is like the fantasy, a lot of times fae, like I have a lot of Irish okay. Irish sent in me. So like fantasy fae kind of um, romance or like more on the self-help kind of philosophical side. Um, the book I'm actually reading right now is called The Mission of Art uh, by Alex okay. Gray. Um, okay. Who I'm actually leaving in a week from our podcast recording right now. Um, to go and do an art intensive um, with Ooh. Alex Gray, a visionary art intensive on the okay. East Coast. So, nice. Look, yeah. Um, but yeah, other than like audiobooks and things like that, um, I mean, I love like hanging out with, I got two kitties, a dog and a snake. I love hanging out with them and traveling. I love to just, um, just go out and like fuel the, the, the inner artist, I'll call it. Like, I just, I love going to like weird new places like when I when I travel places and visit places I don't go for like the five-star resorts I go for like what's the funky artsy weird looking place like mm -hmm. 
go there. Um, so I, I find all those kinds of places around Austin. Um, yeah, it's funny when you say like, what do you, what do you love other than art? I'm like, I love, I love things, but I don't love, I don't love anything as much as I love art, I guess we'll say. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, well, you know, you know baking, it's cooking, traveling, all yeah, those things. Yeah. Art is my, my heart. And well, it's funny. I, um, I joined, you know, I'm, I'm belong to meetup and I'm always looking for what are the new kind of things. Cause I love going to these places that it's like the spoken word mm -hmm. and you just go. And it's just, a lot of times it's like a really quaint coffee shop and it's usually in a place I've never been, you know, and you go in, you get your cup of coffee and you sit and people get up and they, some people sing and some people just do poetry and some people just tell a story. And for some reason, it takes me back in time, not to my time, but to other times that I've seen in movies and stuff where people are in these, you know, places and they're, you know, they're clapping as the snapping of the fingers and mm -hmm. all these different things. And that's the way those places are. And it's like, it just, I don't know, I can't even explain it. It's like, it just lights me up and it's so warm and comforting and cozy and different. You know, I love doing that kind of thing. And I, I will be honest, I haven't done it in quite a while. I don't think I've done it since COVID, to be honest with you. Um, it's amazing how that rearranged our worlds a little bit, right? Some of it for the better, some of it not so much. But um, but yeah, uh, talking about this now is making me realize I need to do that more too. <laughs> yeah, and going to like, I used to love when I lived in LA, I would go to like slam poetry nights. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to, to no. one of them? Mm -mm. Oh, what is that oh man so you if if it's like for you in your area um sometimes it's in like you'll find it more in like established cities and things but but you can like look it up and see um yeah, I'm just a little like, north of Atlanta so okay so, oh yeah. oh yeah then you'll definitely be able to find some s slam poetry so you just look up slam poetry nights and usually it's hosted at like um some kind of cafe or maybe a club or something like that where the I've been to ones that have like 100 200 people and wow. they'll have people who will just go on stage with a poem that they wrote and they get the mic and they've get they get maybe two minutes each or something and they just they're just who whatever people sign up for it is just people reciting and reading poetry and is it like, usually their own poetry or someone yep, else's their own their poetry. own okay and it's you now that I'm talking about it, I'm like, oh man, I gotta see if I'm in Austin, so I gotta see if there's some slam poetry. Cause if you're wanting to like, if you're feeling like kind of creatively uninspired, I guarantee you that will re-inspire you. Like hearing people just passionately sharing their emotions through beautiful words, mm -hmm. <laughs> like slam yeah. poetry. All right. I wrote, I wrote it down so I can check it out. But you know, when I was a kid, one of the things that I love besides art was poetry. And I used to write poetry all the time in my backyard. We had this big Creek and there was a log that had fallen across the Creek. And I would go sit on that log with my feet in the water and I would just write poetry. And mm. I had this notebook full of poetry it ended up getting um, damaged in, um, in some water issue, but uh, so I don't have it now. I wish I did. But not too long ago, I did write, get a notebook out and start writing a little bit mo more poetry. I don't know that it's anything anybody else would really want to listen to. However, I had fun doing it. And so I do that on occasion, too, because I love and some of it's a rhyming poetry and some of it's not. And I know they have like words for whatever the, the kind of poetry it is, but mm -hmm. Um, I'm not privy to what those are called. However, you know, it's, it's fun and it's so it's another way to express myself. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's totally another art form. And that's, I, I also love poetry and mm -hmm. I incorporate poetry with every single one of my original paintings. I okay. write a poem for each of the paintings. So it's is it like, written on a piece of paper or something with it or mm -hmm. on the back yeah. of it or where's it at? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's because a lot of my work is just online. So it's okay. like I'll share images of the painting and then people can read the poem. Um, but if you love poetry, I don't know if you've ever heard of the poet um, Rainier Maria Rilke. No. Rilke, he, he is by far my favorite poet and like so inspiring for creativity. Highly recommend um, 
if you type in Ryle Keem, you'll see like there's one called Letters to a Young Poet. Um, love Letters to God is. I've heard of the Love Letters to God, though. Yeah. So it's, what was the other it, one? Um, Letters to a Young Poet. Okay. And um, Love Letters to God. Yeah, Ryle Key. He just he keeps it real, but his oh, his poems are so powerful. I love them. Okay, I wrote that down too. So I'm going to have to have a whole another notebook just on the yeah. things that I've yeah. got inspiration from you. So I really, really appreciate you um, being here and um, sharing a little touch of your story. I really wanted to dive in more on that, but you know, it's like there's so much of the the stuff to talk about, and this just felt like the next place to go. So maybe we can do this again yeah. and dive into a, a little bit more, but um, I would love to stay connected and maybe you would like to, I don't know. Um, I have a Facebook group and I bring guest experts in to share things that people would want. And my group is called stand up and stand out. And it's for Ooh. primarily women, but I do have some men in there, but it's mm -hmm. basically people who, for whatever reason, are holding themselves back from actually standing up and standing out in their world. And mm -hmm. whether that's being a, um, a keynote speaker or just talking to a group of people or being live on screen or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, I would love to have you as a guest at some point and help yeah, them get that. into their creative place. Absolutely. Ooh, this is yeah. feeling so delicious. I love it. I love it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So um, if you don't mind, tell people um, how they can get in contact with you. Now, I will be putting um, in the description, the show notes, whatever it's called, I'll be putting um, your links and everything um, to how they can get in touch with you. But if there's something that you can tell them right now, so that um, if they can't look at the show notes and they want to just quickly get to you, how would, what would be the best thing? Yeah. So my Instagram is definitely the best way. Um, in my bio, I have links to like my website, my artwork, um, all of my other offerings and things. Um, so my Instagram is just at Dana Wilcher, D-A-N-A-W-I-L-C-H-E-R. Um, yeah. And from there, like I'm really open if people want to come in and ask me questions into the DMs, anything like that. Um, but I share pretty much everything about my artwork, my journey, all of that stuff from Instagram. And you can find links in my bio there to anything all right. else. You well, beautiful. So is there anything that you want to share with everybody before we, um, we close up today that maybe I didn't ask that you kind of want to, want to tell them now, if, if not, that's okay. It's just, I always want to say that because I just ask things that come to me in the moment and there may be something in your heart that you want to get out. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we covered a lot, a lot of really, really deep topics today, but um, I would just really say to anyone who is wanting to explore their creativity more, um, you know, just, just give yourself that space to explore, to dive in. And like what we were talking about in our episode today is like, it's not about what it looks like. It's about what it feels like. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm whatever art form you're wanting to practice, like just letting yourself be a beginner at things. I think a lot of times we are scared to start something new because we want to feel proficient and worthy and we want to just already be good at it. But no one, no one became good at anything like just right away. Right. Maybe they did, but I know I sure didn't. And so <laughs> Giving yourself permission to just start something new, try something new, be a beginner, like don't care so much about what something looks like, but just focus on what it feels like. And you keep doing that and something really, really powerful is going to come through from that. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that. And like I said, Dana, thank you so much for being here. And I'm just going to close it up the way that I always do, which is one of my favorite quotes. And I say that because the thing is, I don't know, really know who said it. Um, so just bear with me on that. But the way, best way to predict the future is create it. And that is such a powerful statement to me because we can create whatever the hell we choose if we decide. Mm. Right? Um, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so thank you for being here and thank you everybody. Okay. And make sure that you 
um, read the show notes and you connect with Dana on Instagram and all of her places. And then my information is there as well. And I would love to hear from each and every one of you. And until then, bye. <laughs> Thank you.